There's something about like 1 p.m. for me in first trimester. It's the hour that my body just like refuses to go on. The thing that has suffered the most is probably our house. I need to not fall asleep on the couch again because I've done that so many times. Just taking it literally like one hour at a time. Hello, good morning you guys. It is nice to be able to finally just film a very real day in the life. Not like my other day in the life in the last like couple of weeks haven't been real, but I can openly talk about being pregnant now. If I'm out of breath, you know why. And it's just good to finally be able to talk about it with you guys. Jude is very hungry, so I think I'm gonna make eggs because he likes them and that's what sounds good to me right now. I honestly haven't had too many aversions this time around, just like a lot of things that I really do want to eat and eggs is one of those things. I think I might also make a coffee. Coffee has been very hit or miss. There was like the first five or six weeks that I couldn't drink it at all. The thought of it was just like absolutely repulsive, but I think I'm gonna have a cup of coffee today just cause I've had a headache for the last like two or three days now that just like won't go away and I haven't had any coffee the whole time but part of me thinks that it could help so I'm gonna try that today we're gonna see if I can get it down and you really need some eggs so I'm gonna make some breakfast okay so I'm sitting down to eat now I have approximately three eggs which sometimes feels like a lot but it's just good protein and fat so I try and make it happen also because sometimes the kids want more of mine too I also have some clementine and a piece of sourdough toast so I'm gonna eat this now and then take my prenatal and the funny thing with me starting to take the prenatal and having that be like a part of my routine is fun. As I was saying, Viv has been asking for a multivitamin as well, which is why I'm super excited to tell you guys about Haya. Haya is a kid's daily multivitamin for children over the age of two. We introduced it about two weeks ago now, and it is like the highlight of her morning every single day. The reason that before discovering Haya, I was actually hesitant to introduce her to a multivitamin is because a lot of the kids' multivitamins that are out there are actually just like candy for kids some of them have up to two teaspoons of sugar they have unhealthy chemicals and some of the like junk that it requires to make them into that gummy consistency is just not good to have in your kid's body every day so that's why Haya was created it is the pediatrician approved super powered chewable kids vitamin Haya is made with zero sugar and zero gummy junk and yet she still actually asks me for it every single day she's the one that reminds me that she wants to take it because she loves the taste so much Haya is designed to fill a lot of the nutritional gaps that children often have in their diets to give them that full body nourishment. It was formulated with the help of nutritional experts and it's got a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies and then 15 essential vitamins and minerals including things like vitamin B, vitamin D, zinc, and folate. And the vitamins are also GMO, vegan, nut free, gelatin free, gluten free, basically all of the free things that you can imagine. So they really are a great option 
in and one of the best parts is that they can come straight to your doorstep on a pediatrician approved schedule. For your first month, you will get the reusable glass bottle and they also send a bunch of stickers for your kids that Vivian is currently playing with right now to actually personalize the bottle, which is so much fun too. So if you have a child over the age of two and you're interested in testing out a daily multivitamin for them, I highly recommend Haya. And Haya also has an offer for viewers of my channel. So all you have to do is go to hayahealth.com slash Beth Moore and you can get 50% off of your first purchase. Again, that is hayahealth.com slash Beth Moore to get 50% off of your first purchase. And we hope you love it. Usually before I start, preschool in the mornings. I like to have the whole kitchen like fully cleaned up for breakfast. I just threw all of the dishes in the sink and I will deal with them later because some mornings it's like, all right, we will never get started if I just keep putting it off until it's like perfect. This week we're doing spiders, which is like kind of gross. I'm not the biggest fan of spiders, but I'm trying to not pass on my same <coughs> likes and dislikes of my children. in your mouth. All right. We will also be reading this <laughs> spider book by Eric Carl. Wincy, wincy spider went up the spout again. Cast your net of silver as soon as it is spun and hang it with the morning dew that glitters in the sun. For any royal Look at, that spider Look at the spiders and the webs they make. Spiders have been around for at least... I don't like touch spiders. You don't like to touch them? That's okay. But How many legs does a spider have? Should we count them? Eight! They have eight legs. Like a spider. I feel like the thing that has suffered the most with me being in first trimester is probably our house i'm trying my best to still stay like very engaged with the kids and keep up like regular routines and rhythms there as much as i can something has to give because i'm obviously very tired and what usually has to give is things like laundry and the house feeling like it's a mess a lot of the time i have just so not been able to stay on top of it the way that i want to and it has been very overwhelming but i've had to totally readjust my expectations and be okay with having less energy to do pickups throughout the day and as much as it is my responsibility and important to keep my house on like a functioning schedule and routine with cleaning and laundry and things like that we have to have clothes at the same time my family doesn't really care as much as i do my husband is very gracious i have left laundry in baskets and he's been like hey do you know where my socks are and it's not like he's ever been mad or frustrated about that he understands where i'm at right now and my kids obviously do not care either they are all always just doing their own thing. <laughs> so this season has looked like lots of mornings sleeping in, lots of the dishwasher not being emptied until after lunch. Anyway, there is lots of visuals like this super full and overflowing laundry basket of clothes that need to be folded all around my house right now. And I'm just taking it literally like one hour at a time. So we just got back from our walk. It was so much hotter out there than we were expecting, but the walk was still lovely. My friend Lexi works in the music industry. So it's nice because we're both self-employed and can kind of coordinate like midweek and daytime hangs. So it's always nice to be able to like visit with a friend while I'm also still with the kids. Getting close to nap time, which is good because I'm starting to feel that just like afternoon slump and the desire to take a nap myself. I am just making myself some lunch now because I'm starving. I'm doing like little chicken wraps with some rotisserie chicken, just shredded with little whole wheat wraps, some sauce, some lettuce. I'm adding a little bit of cheese now that I am eating that again. I'm gonna eat these and then get the kids down for their naps. Hey, I made it to nap time and I am like really looking forward to taking a nap right now myself. I'm trying to not put too much stock into it because there's always a chance that my toddler won't nap and will want to come out shortly. And I need to be prepared for that as well just because I've been in the position where I put the expectation on it and then I've just like let it ruin my day. So 
I'm not going to allow that to happen today, but I would really love to just lay down for like at least 20, 30 minutes right now reading a book to her and I felt like I was sleepwalking and like sleep talking because I am just so exhausted right now. There's something about like 1 p.m. for me in first trimester and it's the hour that my body just like refuses to go on. Now I'm going to sleep. So I just Put the kettle on to make coffee and i realized that the french press has still not been cleaned since yesterday but there are so many dishes in the sink right now because the dishwasher is still not emptied so for me to wash the french press i would need to do a lot of the other dishes in the sink and then i'm just going to be further and further behind on work so i decided i'm not going to have coffee right now made myself a little bit of a snack to try and boost my energy for the afternoon i'm gonna have some clementines some hummus, some pretzel sticks, and just hope that that can get me going enough to get a little bit of editing done. And then I'm just gonna revisit this in a couple of hours. <laughs> The kids are gonna be awake soon and I wanted to make some homemade chicken noodle soup for dinner tonight. And I figured I would show you guys the process of how I do that when I have like a rotisserie chicken to use. It's honestly so easy to do. It looks kind of gross, but I promise you, you'll get a great chicken broth. You just have to save a lot of the nasty stuff like the bones and the leftover chicken that you didn't get off the meat and the skin and the juices and put that all into a pot with a bunch of different things to make the broth really good. But typically I will start by taking off any chicken off of the actual bird that we didn't end up eating. Um, most of the time I'll try and use this in the chicken soup. If there's not enough that is still on the bird, I'll just like cook a chicken breast and shred that up and put that into the soup. But this is what it looks like when I've kind of taken everything off. I said that it's gross, but I will then take this and dump it into a pot. And you want literally everything in there. Like even the fat, all of the like juicy stuff, this is just going to add to the flavor. So it looks gross, but it's good to go in. And then I'm going to fill this until everything is like fully submerged. And then after that, I basically just rough chop a few things in there to add some flavor while the broth is like boiling down. So I will add a couple stalks of celery and I will also include the little like celery leaves. So I'll cut off the little ends and then just chop the other sections and throw all of that in. And then I'm also going to rough chop and add in some carrots. There's no need to peel them. All of this stuff is going to be drained out when you go to actually use your broth. And lastly, I'm going to rough chop an onion as well. I have to say, I'm very grateful that I have not had any issue when it comes to like cooking and things this time around because I do deal with a lot of like raw meat and nasty chicken bones while I'm cooking and things like that. I just can't imagine if I was also feeling so sick that I couldn't do any of that stuff to continue just like getting food on the table. So I definitely feel for anyone that is in that position of just like constant vomiting, constant nausea and getting grossed out by food. So when it comes to seasoning, I do really just try and channel the flavors that you would want in like a chicken dinner, a Thanksgiving dinner. So I'm gonna throw in some thyme leaves, rosemary. It's also great if you have like fresh um, herbs for this, but the dried stuff works great as well. A little bit of sage, poultry seasoning. Obviously you'll want a good amount of salt and I find that you kind of have to continue to add that as you taste test your broth towards the end. And then a couple other things I like to add are whole black peppercorns. So I will add like six of those as well as a couple of bay leaves. After you get everything in here, you'll want to bring it up to a boil and then you can bring it down to like a simmer over medium low heat. If you're doing a chicken stock for chicken noodle soup in as little as like 90 minutes. But you could also have it simmering for honestly up to 12 hours if you want to just deepen the flavor. Baby, 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 I got the chocolate. <laughs> Maybe you could do that checkup on mummy's knee. Maybe it won't have knees for a little while. You need to go to the princess house. You need to go to the princess house? Where is it? Over here. Do you have any crowns with diamonds on them? Uh, what was that? Oh, 
You have a crown for me? A tiny one. Okay, I'm you ready. Can shut up. Okay. Uh, can you be a princess? I'm ready. How do you feel? I feel really good. Thanks for asking. How do you feel? You feel happy? So my super sweet sister-in-law offered to take our kids out for dinner tonight so that Jared and I can have a couple of hours to get some stuff done around the house. And I'm going to use it to do a little bit of like outdoor cleanup in our backyard because since I have been pregnant, I've literally just like abandoned it out there. There's a lot of things that are overgrown that I need to just tame back. There's a lot of weeds that have sprung up and I just need to start the process of actually like preparing the space out there for the fall and for the winter and cutting a lot of things down. So I just threw on a sports bra and a tank top because it's a million degrees outside and I'm gonna go and do a little bit of that. But when I put this on, I feel like I can really see a bump. It's so much more noticeable at the start this time. I think my body just like knows what to do and just jumped right back into being pregnant. So that is, I guess, my first little bump date. I'm doing this for you guys right now. I just have this thing at nighttime with overhead lighting. It just like totally kills the vibe. So I'll literally just like walk around in the dark from 8 p.m. onward. You guys would literally not be able to see anything if I did that. So I will turn the lights on for a second. After bedtime and getting the kids down to sleep, I worked for a little bit on the couch, just finishing up my video for my deadline tomorrow. Jared came home and brought me a little McFlurry treat, which was so sweet. And then we were just watching some videos together, but I felt like I was literally falling asleep as we were watching them. And I need to not fall asleep on the couch again because I've done that so many times in this first trimester. Like, oh my gosh, maybe 50% of the nights that I end up sitting out there, I end up falling asleep on the couch and I will stay out there until like midnight or later. And then it's just such a rocky transition from the couch to my bed because it takes me so long to fall asleep. So I got myself up, I'm in the bathroom, I'm gonna actually like brush my teeth, wash my face, get cozy and then go to bed. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed spending a day in first trimester with me i feel like it's such a weird thing because by the time i announce i'm likely already going to be out of first trimester and then i would have just not been able to talk to you guys about the experience the whole time so i wanted to do at least one day in the life where you could see what it looks like for me and i hope that you guys enjoyed it i wanted to remind you guys that if any of you are interested in testing out a multivitamin for your kids that i have a special offer for you from Haya health so if you want to get 50 percent off of your first order. All you have to do is go to hiahealth.com slash bethmore to save. Thank you so much to Haya for working with me on this video. Thank you guys for watching. I love you. I am praying for you and I will see you soon.